Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Atom RPG. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he shows to join me today here with this frowning man with ski pants as we ask him a few questions. So how is life in general? Uh, we leave, we just leave our lives here day by day. It's a remote place with beautiful nature. We work because we need to survive before everything that happened. I used to be a gardener on a collective farm and taught chemistry to kids at school. Now my wealth of experience came in handy to brew moonshine. A gardener and a moonshine brewer. And a chemist. And a teacher. All in one. Well done surviving. Uh, I'm gonna have a sniff. What's, what's that stink you've got there? Have you been living under a rock? Or are you foreign, a foreign spy? How come you didn't? You don't recognize a moonshine still? One can't live without it. We're used to it. Well, you can't because you make a living out of it. We're used to its smell here already. It doesn't bother us. We found this pl a special place for ourselves. We founded this... Maybe found. Uh, far from the nosy and evil people. The evil people. Yes, you should stay away from them. Uh, what do you do for a living? A bit of everything, he says. Currently, I'm guarding our trade dockyard, he says, with air quotes. Otherwise, I'm recalling formulas from my uh, past life. I've recultivated wine fungi, and uh, the lovely things are now in a box in the cellar, doing their shady business in the dark. Wine fungi? That's a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. We've got to start over again and reinvent everything, he says. For example, you can't do without sugar in our business, but where can we get it nowadays? Petrovich and I were lucky. We managed to get seeds of sugar beets. Pro oh, that's what that is. It was beets. I've never seen sugar beets. They're pretty huge. Unless, of course, it's just a <clears throat> sort of scale issue. Um... <clears throat> From our old stocks, he says. Prior to that, he had worked out a way of making moonshine from seeds without adding sugar. It's drinkable, but it's not the same thing. Hmm. I, I, I've never tasted moonshine. I have literally no idea what it is. I, even less now that I that I thought I thought it was just you know distilled liquor and just sort of you know put stuff in a in a still and make it. But apparently, it takes sugar. I. I don't, I don't, I guess it needs to, otherwise how do you ferment the whole thing? I mean, yeah, I suppose. There are ways to do that without it, but yeah, it's not the same thing, of course. Uh, tell me some rumors. I've heard about these bandits from the factory, with a capital F. Yes, I know exactly those you're talking about. Uh, if it was a single, a lowercase, I wouldn't know. Because there might be other factories. Apparently, they started actively combing the area around their headquarters, laying wealthier villagers villages under tribute. For protection. Who would have thought? Protection from who? Themselves? I fear they'll come across our hut one day, too. What will we do then? Oh yeah, they have just come across your hut. We're barely making the ends meet. We're not living in poverty, of course, but we're not wallowing in money either. Well, join the collective. You're not gonna need the money anyway, because you just get the booze. Is that, how, is that what they want? I don't know that that's what they want. Hmm. If anything, it would be what Otradnoi wants. Maybe, I don't know. I got the I got that impression from, from that. Anyway. Uh yeah, I changed my mind. Let's talk about something else, which is nothing. I should go and I should talk to this fellow over here because uh he gave me a quest and I should tell him about is that it? Yes it is. Hey, uh so share rumors? No. What what's he at how's life? Ske Stepka. Decided to take up sports. Oh yeah, that's right. All right, it's, life is going well, he says. Everyone in camp is healthy and happy. Well, relatively healthy and re <laughs> relatively happy, but these are just the tales. I believe the main thing is that they're alive. Stepka decided to take up sports. It's all thanks to you. Yeah, he's going to now be a, 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 a very good uh, a quarterback or for, for a football team. That's what it's going to do. Uh, I thought, well, uh, for American football team, I should say. Because uh, soccer doesn't have football teams. Wait, soccer doesn't have quarterbackers. I actually don't know the name, the names of the positions of, of soccer. I Or football, as I call it. No, I don't, because I don't pay attention. So, <laughs> um, so let's go inside, because we need to talk to their leader. This fellow over here was the first one to tell me that I should talk to their leader, because I think I talked to him... Did I actually tell him my, uh, what, what my reasons to come here were? This guy wants to have a drink. He was also saying something about potatoes. Do you guys have potatoes around here? Because I don't see any. Also, you do moonshine with potatoes a lot better. Well, actually, they probably... 
Moonshine is probably out of potatoes and beet juice. Or beet sugar, anyway. Uh, maybe. Well, he's definitely going at it. Hey, dude. You do know that there's a... Uh, what's the way... There's a way that you can peel potatoes easily in a bucket. I've seen it, I've seen a video of it once. He doesn't know it because he doesn't he didn't see the video. Uh, but um, there's no YouTube back then. It's uh, if I remember correctly, you add something to the potatoes and water, and then you stir, and th that something will take away the the you just peel the the potatoes. I don't know if it's like it's something like weird like rocks or uh, like a knife or it's not it's not that. I, it might be rocks, uh, but it's just you know it, it'll grind away at the at the skin a man around 35 years old is standing in front of you he's quick have you fi have you noticed have you noticed even more since i pointed it out that the game is obsessed with the age of everybody because er now every time I, I just notice even more he's quickly peeling potatoes his moody face covered in stubble is frozen in a thoughtful expression you can see sadness in his eyes as you approach him he disengages from his thoughts and notices you hi uh can i ask you a few questions the man eyes you indifferently and looks away. Apparently he's not sad anymore. Well, hello, he says. Go on, then. Maybe you'll kill my boredom. Is that why he's sad? How's life? I'm just living my life. I help men with everything. Right now, I'm peeling pot <laughs> He says it like, you don't help women. He just helps men. Then that's maybe why he's upset. Right now, I'm peeling potatoes for the moonshine, he says. After that, Petrovich and I started, uh, will start the brewing. In general, it's not very interesting work, but it's easy and calm. Is it? Yeah, I suppose it is. It's a, I suppose. Uh, and calm, for sure. If you, uh, so, tell me about Petrovich. He's the leader. The man shrugs and puts away another potato and the knife. Petrovich is sort of our boss here. He's a nice, kind man. Before the war, he was a ranger in the local forests. I couldn't say anything bad about him, if, even if I had a habit of bad-mouthing people. He is nearby, standing by the moonshine still. You can talk to him yourself if you want. Okay, uh, so tell me about this place. There's nothing much to tell. I We've renovated an abandoned hut and now brew moonshine here with a man. The business is going quite well. We're getting more clients. There's nothing to complain about. Okay, uh, so can you tell me about yourself? What's there to tell? My name is Serioga. I work with the man. We brew moonshine. Sometimes we taste test. Taste test it, too. After uh, that, some develop... What? After that, some develop a need to sing songs. Although, in my mind, the word howl describes it better. Yeah. So how did you end up here, Sir Yoga? Petrovich invited me here. Before that, I swept streets and this uh, alternative... Promised much more advantages, so I didn't have to think twice about it about this offer. You notice that uh, that after these words, the man's face goes gloomy and his look grows distant. Then he equally uh, he uh, quickly recollects himself and also quickly throws another potato in a bucket. Well, I can feel that it's not all there is to it. Tell me the whole story, old man. I didn't notice. He's he's thirty. He's thirty-five. The man looks up at you, frowning, and folds his arms across his chest. You've clearly failed to convince him. Um, can I go back to that? Hmm. So, about this place? Hmm. I can, I can, okay. So that speechcraft is gonna fail. Because I believe it is not a random chance. As it should be, not a random chance, much better that way. Uh, but that does mean as well that I will be spending my skill points, and that's why I don't spend it anywhere else. I will. Can I use the? It's interesting that it, it shows pluses up there and stuff like that. Uh, so let's see. I leveled up my tinkering a little bit. I'm gonna go to to 80 speechcraft. That's pretty good speechcraft right there. Getting this guy to talk. Also, I need to eat. What's my eating situation? Eh, it's fine. So hey. I want to ask you about yourself, and then I ask that. I can feel there's not all there is to it, or that is not all there is to it. The man looks up at you, frown, frowningly, and, oh no, okay, frowning, and, and folds his arms across his chest. Then he lowers his eyes tiredly, waves his hand in dismissal, and sighs. All right, I'll tell you. After the war, I worked at the electro station in Krasno, uh, in Krasno's Nameni. Hmm. 
I wonder if they changed the name of the city somehow. Because we've heard another version of Krasnos not many, but it might be like a, a bigger area or something. Anyway. I was, a pro uh, it, I was a promising worker and was expected to become a department boss. I was planning to marry a young woman. Everything was good, but the trouble, darn it, always sneaks on you, sneaks up on you unexpectedly. One night, I was walking down the street and noticed a dude dragging a woman. She was fighting and screaming. Without much consideration, I approached him and told him to let her go. The response was, of course, just cursing and bad breath of an alcoholic. This made me mad, and I kicked the crap out of that moron. I broke his nose, too. After that, somebody call, someone called the police and I was arrested. Later, it turned out that the beaten pig was some sort of big shot in the town. Or in town. In court, I was accused of causing grievous bodily harm. You have courts? I, I Remember what I was saying last episode or a couple of episodes ago about uh, Neo Scavenger and how there might be an enclave of civilization? This crash now is not many place. And also, I've seen the screenshots. Not screenshots, actually. The concept art. Uh, so, this crash now is not many place might be like a... Just a basically pre-war city and just full of all the things. You got supermarkets and casinos and, uh, well, I guess that's pre-war, isn't it? Uh, and, uh, and 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 in cinemas and and uh, people in bars and all that sort of stuff. That just, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you know, but a little, you know, a little bit with a Russian taste, because you know it's in Russia. Uh, let's see. The girl I had protected, he says, had been intimidated. She was a witness and not only did, didn't say a word in my support, she accused me of everything. As a result, I got five years in a penal colony, five years gone to the dogs, and I'm told I was lucky. His, well, y you were, especially if you was a big shot, you would have, it's kind of surprising you went to court at all. So it was protection for you, not for anybody else, really. I think you might have been lucky. It depends as well on, of course, the state of the city. We'll see. His hand immediately clenches into a fist, but then it equally quickly relaxes. That's the second time it says equally. And, yeah, anyway. When I got out, he says, my ex-girlfriend had already got married. My fl well, it sounds like you didn't even talk while you were inside, so, she, I mean, she, what, <laughs> five years. Uh, my, because, you know, she was an ex-girlfriend. Wait, did you break up while she went? One day she went to visit me in prison and she was like, I don't like how you like all these different books that I don't like. I'm breaking up with you. And, yeah. Anyway, my flat, he says, had been confiscated. He has a flat. This city sounds fantastic. Uh, had been confiscated by the Chamber of Commerce, at the power station that didn't want to hire an ex-convict even as a regular worker, nor did employers at other places. All that was left to, for me to do was sweep the streets for a mere pittance. The rest you know already. Well, uh, I'm sorry to hear that, but you were a true hero. Let's see what the other ones. You're such an idiot. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. It's not, there's no, not a whole lot of new ones in, in possible options there. Right, he says, only instead of his laurels, this hero got a dump barrack, a constantly stinking roommate, and a miner's cough. Yeah, and probably the woman you were trying to protect, or actually did protect, uh, didn't get a much, much better off. Although, because she told on him, she probably didn't, got killed immediately or anything. Yeah, uh, so, um... That's that. Rumors, maybe? Did I ask you how jam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the one. Rumors? Oh, you know, we we don't we don't work too close to civilization. Have a we who don't work too close to uh, to civilization have a as much of it as a billy goat has milk. Rumors. That is the rumors. Thank you. I changed my mind. You are terrible at this. You are terrible at the rumors. Let's go inside. Okay. I really like the detail of everything. Like, you zoom in close and you can see all the details. It's really cool. For I mean, it's a low-budget thing, but it, like, it's still all there. It's it's still all there. It's pretty cool. Hi. This guy has an eye patch. Okay. He lost his eye. Or he just prefers it like that, which could be a thing. He calculates something in his head. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's the best thing ever. <laughs> Is he gonna be upset? He's not. I'm gonna take your joint, dude. I'm gonna take your. Mm, uh, there's. I don't know names for that. I'm gonna take that photo of a man. Is that a photo of a man? That is uh, a hero. A hero of the Soviet Union. I don't remember if the other one said the same thing. I suppose it did. It's probably the same item. And a place of shield. No, no, not a place. A piece of shield. So we got a piece of tire and a piece of shield. Uh, it looks like a piece of an old shield seems valuable, so it's better to hold on to it. 
No, it's better to sell. Don't use the word valuable in a item description. And, and, uh, I don't, mm. He rubs his forehead tiredly. Oh, there's more things. Is that another joint? He's the biggest joint ever. What is that? No. Information. It is! My god! Well, it's no wonder he's calculating something in his head that I can tell. My god. Anyway, um, let's save. And uh, I'm, I'm arresting all of your sorry asses. This is not going to end well for you. An old man with an eye patch on his left eye is standing in front of you. He's wiping an empty glass bottle with, it, an, with an important look. He has an important look. Turning it in his hands as if, as if looking for the stains is missed. The bottle is sparkling clean. He notices you. The man puts down his bottle and gives you a short nod as a greeting. A sparkle of curiosity appears in his eye for a mere second before extinguishing. My character just can tell all of these little nuances of like I, he's my character is so much better than I am at, at reading people. Like I meet somebody, they could they could hate me, and I, I can tell. I just I, I can't tell. Anyway, in a screechy, uneven dew. Sorry. In a screechy voice, uneven due to his age, but still confident, he pronounces he pronounces. It doesn't it doesn't say. That's how fancy he is. Ah, a fresh face. Did you come to get our stuff? Get your loot out. We've got a barter system here. We exchange moonshine for other goods, although we can sell it for money too, if you have any. Actually, I'm mimicking old man's voice. It's, uh, old, or just old people's voice, really. Uh, it's a thing that happens to our voice as we get tired, basically. It's, uh, it does happen, not, it's not just about, it's, just, it's not for old people. Uh, and actually, a lot of old people don't have this voice. It's just when they're tired, and then just they're weak. And young people can have that too, and if they're tired and weak, and also probably, you know, close to, yeah. Uh, so a great dis. Uh, we, mm, I won't. I won't be able to uh, greatly appreciate any discount here. Uh, let's see. Well, show me what you got. Yeah, I just have things. Okay, so maybe you could answer a few questions, a few of my questions. It looks like, despite everything, your natural charm has impressed this uncompromising old man. Uncompromising. He shrugs and gives you a nod. Ask away. So, how did you lose your eye, if you don't mind me asking? What? You're expecting to hear a story about my losing it to a rogue bullet or to some monster? Nah, it was much more trivial than that. I poked it out myself. That's not trivial. That is, that's, that, no. <laughs> I poked it out myself, he says, shortly before the war broke out. I was chopping logs and not paying attention, and that's how I got a sharp splinter in my eye. It poured out almost immediately. Uh, I'm pretty sure eyes don't pour out. That's not, that's not how they work. I mean, they have liquid inside, but it's not... You'd bleed out. And, mm, the humdrum of life. What can be done? <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, what, what are you busy with? I brew moonshine. I practiced it even before the war. I was a ranger here when it was trendy to go camping in this area. Plus, people would come to live in their summoner houses here. They'd send messengers to me. Asking, Petrovich... Be a good sport. Help us make our holiday fun. And that's that's the story of the huge um, blunt that he had over there. So I would help. Why not? Naturally, it's the story of the moonshine. It was illegal, of course. But what is that what defines moonshine? The fact that it is illegal. Because otherwise it's just other stuff. Is that what it is? Maybe it is. It was illegal, of course. But who would investigate our remote village? Also, I found it weird. To hear. I'm not saying that it's not true, but I find it that it, as a Portuguese person who has never been to Russia, uh, and uh, honestly only ever met one Russian in my entire life personally, although online uh, there's, there's a lot of you out there, so thank you for, for all the comments so I can meet you and hear from you. That's very much appreciated. Uh, but maybe you can tell me, was there such a thing as, as, the, as the US had it, which was the, I don't know what it was, I don't know when it was. Uh, but I know the U.S. had, like, this prohibition. I think it was the prohibition, uh, where alcohol couldn't be sold at all, uh, or something like that. I'm not really sure what was. And that's when moonshiners used to uh, make NASCAR cars. 
<laughs> Basically, that's the origins of NASCAR. Um, but or stock, stock car racing, that's the correct term. Um, but I find it weird, and the reason why I mentioned me being in Portugal, uh, because, because I'm working off of a lot of hearsay, maybe a lot of prejudices. Well, not prejudice, what's the word? Stereotypes, that's the word, uh, as well. But I find it weird that in Russia, they would not allow booze. That, I mean, come on. Haven't you ever seen a, a James Bond movie? I haven't. I haven't. Don't they drink, like, vodka to say, say, say they're friends in James Bond movies? I, I've never watched any James Bond movies, so there you go. Uh, but anyway, that's interesting. And he, he says, of course, so it's like, of course it was illegal. Why was it? Ooh. There was never such a thing here in Portugal. <laughs> I'm just saying. And, like, wine and booze. Was just everybody had a steal. Not everybody had a steal. My, my family had a steal. Uh, and they got rid of it. Just not for no particular reason. That's how not much of an issue it was. And we made wine. We had a little bit of a vineyard. So we made a few few uh, of the, like, half a, half a huge place thing. Like 50 liters or something. 500 liters, I should say. Every year. Uh, I think it was more or less the output of our little vineyard. Um, anyway, so you're a ranger. You're an old resident? No, he's a ranger. He's a ranger. I, it would seem I am an old resident. Ah, it's so many stories about my time of that at that service. I, I think resident might mean something that I'm not aware of. I remember there were these two poachers I would chase away all the time, Semyon and Valerie, sillier offenders. And now after the war, who would have thought this? Me and Semyon have become friends. Everything changes. Hmm. Do I know Semyon? Chief Moonshiner smirks and carefully fixes the patch on his left eye. Yeah, he lives in Otradnoi now. Yeah, that's why I know him. In a village to the north from here. He's an old man now, even older than me. If my health allows it and I have time, I visit him occasionally for a shot of Schiffer. Sch You've heard of it before. I, you just can't pronounce it. Anyway, I wish I could find Valerie too. I've heard the times... Uh, I've heard he lives somewhere nearby as well only he is hiding away from people it's a pity oh, maybe i could, if i meet him i could say hi to him for, from you ah uh, well if you do meet him say hi tell him that ranger petrovich invo invites him to come visit only where will you find him Semyon hasn't heard about him for ages it was one traveler who told me about valerie he allegedly had seen him in a forest not far from here. Maybe if you have a stroll around the area. Yeah, we do need to go to the forest. And thank you for the help that you've given me in the comments regarding that forest. I'll be reading that. Try not to spoil much for myself or anything for myself, hopefully. I've never seen any spoilers yet, so thank you for that as well. But anyway, um, I've got a feeling I'm, I'm definitely going to meet him. My narrator tells me. Uh, so uh, what are you busy with? I've told you everything already! I brew moon... Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? Ah, it's a lovely place. It was even nicer before the war. I wish you'd seen it then. The West Foothill was considered a nature reserve back then. Well, a part of it. And the other part was the hunting grounds for the party officials. In the east and along the coast, the climate is subtropical, which here is nice. Oh, w while here it's nice and moderate. Plenty of... Well, you think subtropical would be nice and moderate. But, you know, to each their own. It's too cold for me here, most likely. Plenty of animals, pine trees so wide you need at least two people to hug them. He says, because he hugs trees for a living. Not a living, but sort of a... You know, pastime. And now, the climate has changed after the bombs. Even though we weren't bombed here, but still the forests are dying. The hills are gradually turning into dunes. Each day there are less and less normal animals left. And even the number of these mutated freaks seems to be diminishing. The life is leaving this place, and we have no one to blame for it but ourselves, humans. Uh, well... <laughs> the end of the world has already happened. It's only going to be better now. Uh, humankind had nothing to do with it. These were the politicians who waged war. Let's go with that. It's very apropos of the Cold War as well, I suppose. It's too kind. No, not too kind. Too right, he says. To be, But to be honest, the politicians couldn't even do their own laces without the popular support. Even if it was silent, 
No, we shouldn't avoid the responsibility. We're all to blame for what happened, and there's nothing to be done about it now. Well... I... There's a lot to be said here in regards, at least to the to the way the masses thought during the Cold War, and I say the masses on both sides, if we're talking US and Russia. Um, there are stories that are chilling and, in, and in, incredible and just stunning and just absolutely horrific stories about... Uh, there's one in particular that I, I, I have heard more, but there's one in particular that stood in my mind, and I can't tell you names, but I will tell you in a future episode, uh, of a... Uh, I think it were three nuclear submarines, uh, and they were off the coast of... I don't know where they were, but I think they were in the Pacific... Uh, and uh, they had uh, th they were nuclear submarine, uh, submarines ready to uh, ready with nuclear bombs, uh, and they I, I or was it a an aircraft carrier? Might have been an, anyway. It doesn't matter. So basically, the 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 situation with the war was so tense uh, that um, there was this whole chain of command. So if the president died, the president of the United States in this case, this, that those nuclear submarines were uh, American. Uh, if the president died, um, they would. Um, they would have people below the president capable of uh, just destroying the world, destroying the planet with nuclear bombs. That's basically what they were uh, going to do if, if, they, if they started a nuclear war. Um, and, and that still exists to this day, by the way. But still, the, this is the story of the 70s, late 70s, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you just the details so you can look it up later. Uh, I'm going to tell you in the an upcoming episode. But anyway, the story goes, and this is t told by the commander of one of the submarines, that if they didn't get, I think it was ever for every 40 minutes getting a communication or every two hours uh, getting a communication from HQ or whatever, just telling them, hey, everything is good and everything is okay, they would automatically deploy um, the nuclear bombs. That was how tense it was, just as a, as a sort of a safety measure, just in case uh, the Russians attacked and destroyed the, the chain of command, they would still have the submarines uh, at sea and capable of, of deploying the, the warheads. And uh, there was a radio miscommunication. There was like a bug in the system or whatnot. It was, I think, uh, somebody that didn't know what they were doing or something like that. Something stupid that didn't that didn't allow them to get... I think it was like every 40 minutes they had to get the message and for two hours they didn't get a message. And the commander of the, the squadron of submarines, there were three, I think, uh, the commander didn't allow that to happen. There was an interview with him as well. Um... I can I can tell you later, uh, but it, he didn't let that happen. He said, "Don't do it. Let's wait." And they waited, and everything was fine. So the world could have ended just then because of a radio mistake. Because you had the warheads how to see with people that were capable of launching them, or at least allowed to launch. Them. Of course, uh, capable is another thing, but allowed to launch them. So it's um, there's a lot to be said regarding the politicians and the people. Um, it was a very tense situation and I don't think a lot of people realize, realized back then and realize even today what, what we went through in the Cold War. Uh, and uh, I learned about it at school, but <laughs> that we didn't learn about it at school. Uh, it, it, we don't get taught. I mean, uh, I, I, I grew up in a free country, as, as, as you would call it, I guess, uh, and we had... Um, uh, skewed we all like every country has skewed history uh, lessons and all that of course um, but it wasn't like you know it wasn't like if I had been born 20 years before it wouldn't be like that at all the lessons that I would have gotten at school but still um, uh, they don't they don't teach people don't know and so it's, it's incredible it's chilling to read stories like that but I will let you know about that particular incident and the name of that commander so I can look it up and I'll tell you in uh, uh, an upcoming episode but for right now Let's change the sub... Let's actually... Yeah, so we have just asked the... Uh, tell me about this place. So let's go for rumors. Rumors! There are no rumors. Okay. Well, there it is. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I am Colonel RPG, and this has been Atom RPG. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. And again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.